This is Larry Zabisco Wrestling's Living Legend, and you're watching Monty and the Pharaoh. To grow up and be a man. Come on. All right, welcome to another episode of Monty and the Pharaoh, Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Only seen here on Village Connection Radio, live from Rockstar Studio. Across at the board is none other than the studio manager and co host of Bill and the Rockstar, co host of The In Crowd, Stephen Miller. To my right is the star of the show, Jimmy Farrow, and on the couch is none other than our special guest, WWE superstar Butch Reed. It's our honor, sir. How are you? All right, sir. <clears throat> How are y'all doing this morning? Good, good morning. Well, I guess it is kind of carrying over from the morning. <laughs> Been a heck of a day so the morning, far. The morning was kind of long since so around about 6 o'clock for me. Well, as we always do here, Butch, on this show, we always start with the esteemed introduction, so if I may. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today, born Bruce Franklin Reed. I have July 11th, 1954. American retired professional wrestler, former football player, better known by the in-ring name Butch Reed. Best known for his appearances with the World Wrestling Federation and World Championship Wrestling between 1986 and 1982. Birth name Bruce Franklin Reed from uh, University of Central Missouri. Um, we have a long and lengthy professional wrestling career and championships and accomplishments are as follows. Central States Wrestling, NWA Central States Tag Team Championship. Oh, look at this with Jerry Roberts, okay. Championship Wrestling from Florida, NWA International Heavyweight Championship. Reign not recognized in Japan? What's their problem? All right, what do we got here? NWA North American Tag Team Championship, Florida version with uh, Sweet Brown Sugar there, Mikey. That's right. Sweet Sounds brown familiar. Sugar. Yes. Sounds real familiar. I can. I, didn't we jam with Sweet Brown yeah. Sugar? We did. Yeah, we did. Well, just you the did. other day. Yeah. Sweet Brown Sugar was in studio Thursday, and he says hello. I guess you haven't seen him in a while. Yes. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. Yes, yes. How do you guys lose track of each other? How does that even happen? Just paid off, man. I mean, there's nothing for losing track. It's because we just got so much distance between us here and there. Mm. You know, and we just go through different phone numbers and all this. And that's that's the big part of it, really. Yep. You get you blown know. around wherever way the wind blows, and yeah. sometimes you cross paths, right? Yeah. Uh, as we continue here, Mid South Wrestling Association, which I personally love, Mid South North American Heavyweight Championship three times. Mid South Tag Team Championship with Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Wow, look at that. Mid South Television Championship. So we move on. PWI, which is our favorite mag, has ranked him in the top 500 several times. Uh, what else do we have here? United States Wrestling Association Unified World Heavyweight Championship. Uh -huh. World Championship Wrestling. Tag Team Championship, oh yeah, with Ron Simmons. <laughs> oh yeah. I smell doom. Been there, done oh boy. <laughs> and uh, here's here's one for you, and I really love this one. Wrestling Observer Newsletter, when normally I don't go nuts for Dave Meltzer or his opinion, but mm -hmm. I really do love this one. Five star match nineteen eighty two, Butch Reed versus Ric Flair. Wow. Look at Ladies that. Ladies and gentlemen, the natural Butch Reed. All them. right, Butch. And Flair done bumped heads a few times, bud. How, how, how was it working with Flair? It's, it's very, it was very rugged. It's very, it was very experienced. Good experience. Because Rick had several years on me before I broke in. And uh, we kind of enjoyed working with each other. When we made the money, we sold, we sold some crowds. And you know, when we were in there, and, and hip and tuck, we were, 
We was we were down hard in the trench. How were you two behind the scenes with each other, like in real Very life? Well, you guys were tight. Yeah, we we were fed. We go went to the bar, and drank, and everything else. Oh boy, a brick mine. Yeah. Oh well. I think I'm not gonna work. I'm not gonna. Ric Flair or Andre the Giant in a drinking oh, contest? Oh, man, do, well, not, who wins? Do, not, <laughs> do not go there. I was just talking to my did. buddy about Andre. He can't out drink him. Mm. Between him and Harley. Harley? That's oh. the king of beers. Really? <laughs> so Harley's number two, if there's a list. Harley, Interesting. Did not I don't know, know but I ain't never compared them, but they, they're neck and neck. So, Butch, how, how does it start, right? You played uh, NFL football with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, how do you break away from football and become a professional wrestler? And why uh, become a professional wrestler? Well, anyway, I was hurt coming out of college anyway. Oh, okay. You Injury. Know, and uh, I had an ankle and knee problem coming out of college football. And, you know... And, what position, no. if I can ask, what position? Right in the middle. Oh, boy. Yeah, you need your feet. Uh, you got to have them feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be happy feet. Yep, you got to be explosive. Yeah. Very. Mm. But anyway, I, I was, I was uh, what you call, I'm blessed enough to go down there on the coverage team, special teams, you know, and just hit anything when I was in Jersey. And that was, that was, uh, because if you don't have your your agility, your mobility, and your flexibility, you're you're kind of gipping here and there and hurt there. You know, NFL's not for you. So how do we get to wrestling then? What happens? I walked in Bob Goggle's bar one day. I was determined to be some kind of a professional athlete. Okay. Wrestling was the only thing I could, <laughs> I could be familiar with. It's a rough Did you watch it when you were young, pro wrestling? I watched it a little bit, yep. I you... always admired with uh, Rufus and Harley. A little war I had going on around. Rufus saw around Jones? Around states. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I pressed him. And uh, to me, it was encouragable. Because they had a few going on that was bar none to me, you know. And uh, I liked it. Harley helped to train me some. Rufus run up down the road and and, and uh, mentor me, you know, and uh, it just. How long did it take before you felt comfortable in the ring? Would you say? Uh, uh, probably after the first year. Okay. Was it was it hard was it hard being a black man in professional wrestling back then? Uh, you know, we've had a, quite a few wrestlers come through here and discussing. You know what kind of sport it was. Was it difficult? Not really to me. It was. You had to hustle. Was well, nothing gonna be given to you. You know. Uh, I, I just broke down. I was athletic enough anyway to do what I needed to do. You know. I was, what you say? You about born an athlete? Yeah. You know. So anyway. Uh, to me, uh, everything was was real civil and everything. I was treated like a real gentleman. Good. You hear? Yep. yep. You know, uh, <clears throat> I broke in up in the north. I broke in in Vancouver. Went up down all them mountains and everything like that. Russell Virginia, Kaniski, and Al Tomko. Mm. You know, you drift it on down into Portland. And, Around San Francisco, Montana, all in there, you know. But uh, I like I like work, working around Vancouver, you know. Take the mountain trips, and right. go up out of the reservation, and, <laughs> and just kind of swing it your own way, you know what I mean? And we we were we were welcome, and I, you know, we all don't run into some prejudices and stuff like that. But it's really it's really. Not that bad. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, we didn't. There wasn't no signs hanging up, no cross burners. Okay. Nothing like that. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> that word nigga come up every once in a while. Really? Now. Get the, 
Somebody get the head cold. Yeah, you ain't kidding, right? Do you ever have any uh, ever have any incidents at any bars? Like you know, some drunk ass fan recognizes you and decides to test his own testosterone or something. I've had, I've had it, but it didn't last long. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the end. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> guys have had this, guys have had problems in bars any time to go in them. Bill Watson used to fire boys. For getting the ass whooped in the bar. <laughs> we keep it. So you just didn't want to go to a bar. Ain't none of my top hands gonna get whooped in no bar, in no public bar, and they think they're gonna work for me. I can blame them on that. I seen it, you know. Hell, I stay in the bar every week down in Louis, down in New Orleans, at a place called the Opera House, right on a corner of Bourbon and Toulouse. But we turned that place out. But we didn't have no fun, really. I didn't run into no, no violence and stuff, all in them bars like some people do. Some people, some of them boys, like, I've heard Colonel Buck Robley now, he, he got a little mouthy down there in Louisiana, Bill and Dusty, with Dusty Rowe. They got the they got the clocks. Oui. They got the clocks turned. <laughs> and they didn't get fired. Up, you think? <laughs> Wait a minute. D- Dusty day. didn't get in trouble for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good. One more time. Uh-huh. You ain't going to never wear a around Louisiana. You know, you mentioned Bill Watts. What was it like working for Bill? It was a grind. Yeah. Tito Santana was in here last weekend. Was it Tito? Um, oh, wait a minute. No, I lost my lost track. But anyway, long story no, short. Tito's thing was with Oli. Yeah, Tito's thing was Tito's with Oli. Tito's thing was with Oli. But anyway, we heard a story with, you know, Bill Scorpio. Watts. Two cold Scorpio. Scorpio, that's Scorpio right. told the story that Bill Watts basically threw his ankle up on the desk and showed that there was a revolver that's right. in his boot. <laughs> and he said, I'll, I will call you an, the N-word. I'm just letting you know in advance. If I call you the N-word, you know, if you think I'm a jerk... Go to JYD, and he'll tell you that I can make you money. That was that's the weirdest story, but this is what he did to Two Cold Scorpio, from what we heard. You, ne- you never dealt with any of that hey, stuff, no, right? No, no, hell no. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't have tolerated I, it I anyway. I Bill Watts once. I'll whoop his ass. <laughs> you know, going to jail, partner. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I'm going to jail, but your ass going down. So, uh, Hacksaw, I got to ask you, how do we get to the uh, nickname Hacksaw? How's that come? It's come from the Funk Brothers. Okay. Down in Florida. And what were the circumstances? How did it, how did it come I about? I had a football background. Back then, the old Hacksaw Rim was still in the you know, NFL, not the state. And he had the gimmick with the fire and all that. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, he, Jim Duggan, he just, you know, had the name the Hacksaw too. You know, down in Georgia, where I spent, where I spent a few days down there with uh, championship wrestling in Georgia. Uh, but it was like football, <clears throat> f- football name, you know. Mm-hmm. Was there any uh, real, like, debate in real life behind the scenes uh, between you and Duggan over the name? I'm just curious. Because no, I know you no, had the, uh, I know you had no, the, the few. No, 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 Okay, no. okay. I'm just curious. Like, uh, hey, we're both using the same name. Maybe yeah, one of us should we, change. Or... We got off on it, buddy. She, okay. We had the Battle of the Hats on. That was, yeah, that well, was you a did. popular. Uh, you did. That was a popular. Uh, but you do old. realize today that would probably never happen where Vince would be like, okay, you have the same name. No, no big deal. I can't see it. I can't see uh, Vince allowing that. So. Well, uh, that didn't happen with him. Yeah. Very they, interesting. They, they, they uh, him. Big Cat, Ernie. See, Ernie's a mentor of mine. Ernie's God everywhere. We've him. been hearing Ernie a lot lately. Mm. Uh, he, uh, him and Vince, I guess, knocked their heads together in the office. And they come out with a gimmick to hack the natural. Plus, they haven't seen a blind man, a blind black man, anyways. <laughs> by the, by the way, uh, when, when you came to the WWE awesome. with the blonde hair, that was that awesome. was awesome. Yeah, I loved that. I sp- thought that was speaking great. of natural. Um, uh oh. <laughs> when yeah, I'm taking a liberty here. I may be wrong. I might be wrong. You may be. Um, you may when not. did you start hitting the gas? And why did you start hitting the gas? <laughs> if you unless did. you were if, if you natural, did. If, if you did. Well, well. And why did you hit the gas? <laughs> I was going to just take off like a rocket. 
<laughs> little extra gasoline or rocket fuel. Where did they insert call this it thing? How you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, I shot up, boy. Yeah, I took off. You know, and that one was was the gimmick. I'm a natural athlete. <laughs> Which that's true. That is true. I yeah, got well, yeah. natural blonde hair. <laughs> I'm, a lot. You know, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a natural black man. <laughs> so that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know after the gas. I'm I don't know if anybody's blonde. natural. That, 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 was, that was a little bit on the uh, way. <laughs> that was oh, on the twisted side. Man. Yeah. <laughs> you are too funny, man. I, well, that, that's the way I looked at it. And that's how I made it with that gimmick. Man. So when you were coming up through the ranks... Did you feel the WWE, WWE was the place to be? If you made it to New York, you made it, or were you more focused on just being in the NWA? I mean, what were your thoughts as a wrestler? You had to get to New York, or did it really matter if you had to get to New York? It didn't matter to me. I'm going where I'm going to make it, and I'm going to really be a success. And this gimmick change over it, that, that kind of, you know, that, that sparked. That sparked a flame. Mm -hmm. It's something different, you know, because y'all know I broke back the hats off. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's an easy ride. Everybody know about hats off, but really, they didn't even get to know that natural. And uh, my wife, bless her heart, bless her soul, she uh, kept me looking good. She's a natural hairdresser, you know, and... Uh, I had I had no problem, but just <laughs> look look pretty, blonde head. Now you pulled it off. Dark skin, <laughs> walk and talk, but back it up. That's it, baby. Oh, back, back it up. So history tells us that um, after Steamboat won the Intercontinental Title, you were the next man up, mm. and you kind of dropped the ball by not showing up to an event. Is this yep, true? Yep, yep, yep. That's true. What happened? You just decided not to show up. You missed a plane. You get your hair dyed. What was going on? Just missed it. Just missed it. How does we that work out? Though? Do you know that they're ready to put the strap on you? Or does someone just tell you afterwards, hey, man, you blew it because, you know. It didn't matter. I was tired. We talked about 360 days on the road. Hell, I can't get home once a month. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. hit burnout level. Just that was burn, that. About burnout. Right? Just done. You yeah. got it. Sizzle. I want me in there Pile there. of ashes. I want to actually <laughs> in the house. You know, I had a farm out there in the country. You know, and shit, man. I don't want to see my kid. Here, my old lady. She, she's about to burn out. I'm taking another day. I didn't mean to blow that shot. I mean, did you know that shot was coming though, or yeah, I knew it. Ooh, was was winning a championship important to you? Nope. No. No. Mm -mm. Okay. I know I'll always be in the running. That's just that confidence that every athlete got to have if you know they're gonna make it. And uh, <clears throat> I knew it was a good. It was a a good a good. Shot in the ass. Man, I, you know, like I just told you, I said, I, hell, I just need me a rest. Mm -hmm. we're, taking, we're talking about six, seven days a week, twice on Saturday and Sunday. How much harder does Vince McMahon push his wrestlers than compared to the other companies you went through? Is Vince we, really, at the end of the day, he's just the roughest, right? two or three damn uh, crews. And all of them humping and bumping the same way. You hear me? What was your relationship so like with the country? What was your relationship like with Vince himself? I mean, Vince ain't had all that much of a problem with you know. We met Vince McMahon. You know, I uh I I didn't like the way he handled the business towards some of us. You know. Shorter money here, longer money over there. We all up and bumping on that top. You know, I see, I see, I see a couple thousand dollars short. 
grab somebody to bug people. Fair to say he made you feel like a piece of meat? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, okay. You know, we'll go out there, and I'll work my ass off hard as anybody. And then these, these checks is different. Houses ain't. Them houses is just seating some good people. Mm hmm. And he got three crews running, man. You know, and you feel like you cheated. Butch Reed ain't no fool. Ain't nobody damn did yeah, There you go. So, so was it a culture shock too? You're coming from the NWA or, or down south playing to 5,000 fans and coming up to New York and playing to a sold out Madison Square Garden at, at 20,000 fans? Were you nervous? Was it a culture shock? Just so, didn't matter. You just ready to go. Ready to go. I'm ready for it. This is what you prepared uh, for. That's, yeah. what been, that's what I've been rocking and rolling for. These big, these big crowds. I ain't never had no real, uh, <clears throat> I've never had no real shyness in the wrestling ring on football field, none of that. Not even nervous at WrestleMania three. Nah. 93,000. Wow. Aretha Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Second one who said get that this week. Oh, I was really, I was really, I, I was really clucking in. You must have been blown away by that. Yeah. That had to be something. Aretha won't want me to help her. It's going her out. <laughs> oh, oh. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, up in Detroit. You know, I was, that was really a good deal. You know, God rest her so. And you wrestled Coco Beware at WrestleMania Coco 3. Beware. Who was here Thursday. The buzzard man. The, the, the bird man, the right? The buzzard man. <laughs> the buzzard He hated what I called him. Did you, oh my Did he really? God. Buzzard man. <laughs> Me and Slick would talk about it before. He, he had to get mad. I said, yeah, you know, bird man. <laughs> buzzard man. right there with old buzzard on your shoulders. Talking about his name, Frankie. <laughs> you are too You are a buzzer, man. Buzzer. <laughs> what makes you part the WWE? Uh, Why do you leave the WWE? I'm trying to run around up there. Just too much? That schedule at the end of the day was just too much? I'm trying to run up there. Went on back down there. Bill Wise, he was booking out of Georgia. You know. Uh, That's when you moved the WCW, right? World right around. World Championship Wrestling. And you start the tag you start the tag team of Doom with Ron Simmons. Yeah. Which in my and I think in many opinions of wrestling fans out there is a Hall of Fame tag team without oh, a doubt. Yeah. We were good. No, you weren't good. You were great. No, you're great. And you know, that's not because you're and, and, and you battled with legendary teams too, and it was a legendary, legendary time period for that, that division. Damn that Steiners. was Oh yeah. So how, how was it working with the Steiners? Hard headed. I can imagine that. You gotta beat them up. For real, beat them. Really so, well, that's, so they oh. took liberty. They used to take a lot of liberties on a lot of talent, right? Did they try to take liberties on you, and did you return favor? On him and Ron? Oh, man. Never. <laughs> so Scott and Rick <laughs> weren't tough no guys way. around you, too. Oh, we beat the shit out of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you. That's the, 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 the doom. <laughs> to, to, get your, to get your point across, to get, to get your match over, them baby faces. We the toughest. We the, we the baddest mamma jammas up in here. You know, we're the biggest and the blackest. Yeah, you, were, you guys <laughs> were bad. No argument there. They're going to get dressed. Y'all going to get beat. Effed up. up. Yeah. They were good. <laughs> they were some rashing bastards. They were. They were. How, how about the Road Warriors? Oh, it's, yeah. How, how physical we was good. that with you guys? We were good together, man. We just, okay. we like the phys physicality. We like to work with each other. And, and we made we made good matchup. We would sell our crowd, you know. Oh, yeah. With the Warriors, even with them, with them Steiner. <laughs> and I'll tell you another damn good team, too, guys. Is that, is that, is that Rock and Roll, Ricky and Robert. Rock and oh Roll boy. Express. Oh, yeah. They're my boys. Yeah. I'm and really glad we got them. fly all around you, then you cut them off. It's <laughs> okay. I just don't Just keep it. that close to you. <laughs> then you got, then you got some action. Let me ask Robert, you. Robert, Robert. Who? Uh, no, uh, Punky Martin. We call him Punky. <laughs> Ricky. He get outside and start crying in them girls' lap. <laughs> anybody hurt you? Beating me up. Anybody hurt you? P U S S Y. Come here. Come here. 
Sorry, white boy. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Ow. Listen, uh, you, got, you guys were managed by woman, Nancy Benoit. Yeah. What was your relationship What was your relationship with Nancy? Oh, it was a good friendship. You know, she was, she was very professional, and she was a very good girl. She was uh, married Kevin Sullivan then, I believe. Right. And uh, the tragedy of what happened to her, but <laughs> she about got me a divorce. Really? Do tell. Because <laughs> my manager. That's right. Yeah. There was some heat. In the, there one. was some heat in the kitchen, I huh? I had nothing to do with that woman. <laughs> that's what all put together. I'm just trying to do my job. Make what is she right. doing with you? Yeah, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Ain't my lord. Yeah. No, so seriously, you'd come home from the road or whatever, and the wife would be like, man. she'd be like, what? Look at, look at woman. How can you be surprised? I, I don't blame her one bit. <laughs> Why didn't you blame that? No. You should have blamed that shit right on Ron Simmons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. He's going through the same. Are serious? You're both pointing well, fingers well, at each yeah. other. <laughs> can I? Can I? He's going through the same thing. Damn. Whole damn country was kind of jealous of that girl. Oh, yeah. my Lord. She had some heat, too. But they didn't know how they going to, they might not know how to, you know, they're going to get at her because they were scared of us. Okay. Yeah. Some girls in them crowds won't come out there pull her hair out. Really? I'm not kidding. So you run to, I'm just going to run back from the ring a few times. Did you keep your sure. relationship with her when the career moved on? Or you kind of just separate, sep- nah, separate ways? No, Okay. Yeah. Makes it was sense. business. It was strictly, strictly business. You know. I, I really want to ask you, and I'm glad we have you here to ask you this. Um, you worked with Magnum TA. Oh, yeah. And I, I really would like to know your, how do you feel his career could have turned out if there wasn't that terrible accident? Because we've read many times he was beelining for the world title. Yep, yep, yep. He would have. He'd have been a world champion. It was, it was coming. It was so coming. it was coming. Interesting. Nobody, nobody could demonstrate a, a sleeper hole better than him. He taught me how to use that sleeper. Oh, really? Now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, they just go right to bed. You know it, what I mean? Boop. Is, night the, night. is there anyone that you patterned yourself after in the ring? Anybody that rubbed off on you? Like, I like what this one's doing. I, like, I want to be like this particular wrestler. Did you have any? I love a, my old Harley. Harley, okay. Slow, methodical. You know, Harley wasn't that, wasn't that great an athlete. He could drop kick, though. Oh, yeah, he could. <laughs> yes, he could. And he beat your ass. Did you maintain contact For with him real? over the years? Harley, Harley would beat you up. Oh, he would? Okay. Harley would actually beat you up. <laughs> and old Dick Murdoch. <laughs> what a shock. Oh, what a shock. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, cowboy buddy of mine. Who, who, was the, who was the all-time hardest uh, hitting stiff worker you were ever in the ring with? Uh, any particular match you remember where afterwards you were like, man, what did we just do to each other? Uh, Dr. Death. Dr. Death. Steve. Okay. Well, he's, over, he's still. Uh, man, you hit me like that one more time. <laughs> I'm going to beat all the crust off you. You know what? <laughs> Got cuckoo birds yeah. running around your head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> don't let me forget them. Don't let me forget them damn Von Eric. There you go. Kevin. There you go. I really mean to beat him up. Just talking about the Von Eric boys, did you... Did you see them doing all the drugs that they were doing at such a young age? And did you try to give them some advice, or you just didn't get involved in that type of thing? No, I didn't get involved. But I didn't. Man, I'm not work. I'm not gonna work with you. Jacked up like that anymore. I told Bill Wise all of them. Man, I'm not working with him walking around like that, like a zombie around me. I broke my leg or back. Something. Well, that's got to be scary, right? Because you're in the lock. You know, you're in the locker room. You're seeing these guys getting all, get all high, and you know you got to run a program with them. Are you like, you know, I'm not. Yeah. And there's that spot where he's supposed to be dumping you on your head. Look at this in you. Know, <laughs> that might be a little worrisome. Are you really kidding me? <laughs> Harley, and Harley and I was down there in Oklahoma City. Carry Von Eric tied his damn bootlaces up together. He got up about broke his damn leg. <laughs> Oops. It's time for him to go to the ring. He's all fired away in his, in his boots. Did he like, tr- 
Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is, 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 is there a part of you that yeah. just, But is there a part of you? The, te- the Texas tornado. No, it's like it's like it's, it's lucky he's still on his foot at that point. I don't see that shit. That that no, but I mean. And I'm about, oops, go no, you can curse. Go ahead. He yeah, it's okay. We're ready. And his shit's all laced together. I mean, hold it. Look at it. That makes for some drop kick. Oi. Damn, Carrie. <laughs> you think you ought to start all over again? That's what Holly said. I think you need to start all over again, Carrie. <laughs> Look at your boots. You oh, dumb. my God. But don't you fit? Do you sit down with some of these guys? Like, come on, man. You know, you, you, yeah. you're throwing your life away. I'm nice. Uh, oh, you're just like, you know what? I got a butchery. You got to take care of butchery. <laughs> yeah, shit. Good move. You grown ass me and shit. All right, so let, let's. Uh, Evan Ginsberg, associate producer, the, uh, the wrestler, and 350 Days. I don't know if you caught yes. that movie. Um, the documentary just came out on DVD, and uh, a portion of uh, a portion of it is you guys being on the road. Um, obviously, you had a pretty close relationship with Junkyard Dog. Yep. Can you tell us a little He's Junkyard like a Dog story. Can you tell us some Junkyard Dog stories? He's like a brother. He hit you hard too. He hit much. I love you too. But uh, he really, he's a really reason for my uh, longevity down there at Big South. Cause he, he, <laughs> he was black side down there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was he your greatest opponent? Because I feel like the two of you together. Yeah. That was it right there. You say that. That was a natural. That was a natural made uh, matchup. Junkyard Did- dog. I painted him. I painted him yellow on Memphis TV. That was world. That was world viral. And poured feathers on him. <laughs> Me and Buddy Landell. I did it with a white man. <laughs> right down in the heart of the south. With a white. Huh? I was a bad man. Was I? <laughs> right down in the heart of the south. Right down in the middle of clan land. I painted a black man yellow streak down his back. And then poured feathers on Tart and Feathered him. Uh, with the help How of are you a, feeling about that after? With the help of a white man out there, I'm doing about it. You hear me? That buddy Landell, oh, yeah. he'd always leave the buildings early because he know he got plenty of heat. Yeah. Wow. You helping that. You helping that. You helping that. <laughs> black and white folks get to this. Uh. I had the black heat. I had a good white heat. Black folk, you Uncle Tom, some bitch. You are no good black bastard. <laughs> day, another, right. another day at the all office. Around. Another day at the office, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. Pay me all the way to the bank. Time to clock out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going all the way to the bank. Damn straight. We uh, absolutely. All over the world. How close did you remain with Junkyard Dog before his passing? <laughs> just, just as tight as it was. So did, did you know that he was having the problems that he was yeah, having? I knew he was. Mm. Anyway, he didn't stop. He smoked. He had a stroke driving home from his daughter's graduation and uh, run off the road. You know, but you got to see if Tisha graduate from high school. God bless him. She's passed on too. She's a good girl. That was his pride and joy. But he got to, he got to, he got to be around her and everything. I just didn't want to hear that about him having a stroke. Off that road. That hurt me. I couldn't make it to the funeral. It was it was it happened too fast and the funeral come up too fast. But he knows he knows in spirit I'm there. You know, and he's very very brilliant inspiration to me. I ain't never seen nobody over like that. Nah, he was way over. 
<laughs> and he should have been given the strap at one point. Yeah, he was world championship material, right? I mean, what on earth oh, prevented yeah. that from happening? Maybe he wasn't. Uh, he kind of he was trying to uh, sit. He was kind of set down there in that territory, like he's a king. Right. He didn't want to go to war. But he did get tired, and he moved on, and he went to Vince. He needed to move anyway, you know. He needed, every, every, all of us in this business need to change. Yeah. Change of uh, environment, you know. Do you, so. think, do you think the move up north started all these problems with the, with the drugs? Or was there already warning signs before then? I can't really call it, guys. It didn't help nothing. Sure. It just kind of fed the fire, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. That's a big time. That's the big time. Yeah. We've You're going all around this country. I see, I see, I see my band go in the, in the most dangerous of, uh, of neighborhood between New York, Miami, and Florida. And they pulled out. They pulled out the red carpet. Hell, yeah. you think real thugs be trying to mug him? <laughs> Hell, they welcomed him. Yeah. I mean, real big time. Yeah. They all up in these old, uh, up all in these damn old uh, buildings, and or some people might not come out of them. Mm. Walking. Yeah, come on back down with a sack, Paul. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, come back down with a sack, boy. Let's go, bud. I said, I ain't coming back down here no more, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking take too long, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. tired. You know where the hell we at? You're like sitting in the car. Yeah, I'm driving. You're like, I'm, this is bullshit. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the wheel man. I'm going to jail, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I didn't even take anything. I'm going to have to go Literally. back up there and pull him out if they won't uh, try to cross him. Yeah, yeah. Damn. You know, I gotta put my my ass on the line and go back up and say my best friend. Well, I woulda. Yeah. You know, well it was just funny. You know, uh, <laughs> out in L.A. everywhere, man. Yeah. I ain't kidding. Way down deep, Miami, New York, Bronx, Harlem, wherever. You know, New York. New Jersey. Dangerous buildings to walk into everywhere. Dangerous territory. <laughs> oh my God! No thanks. Oh, oh my Lord. We uh, we had Billy Jack Haynes in here a couple of weeks ago. Oh no, my Lord! Is, oh uh, my Lord! So uh, how well did you how how well did you know Billy Jack? Oh man, me, me and him say boom, man. We we tight. Did you know that he was? Uh, oh no! A major cocaine dealer. Here we go. Nope. I mean that's what he said on the show. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not is. saying that. I I fell in this business. I don't care neither. He was too busy waiting in the car in Newark. <laughs> Leave him alone. That's great. He didn't tell me <laughs> like that. He didn't say nothing. I, I, I don't know about that something. mess, but I got this one here. What do you want I, from me? I might, I might have wanted something back in them days. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want some now. What are you talking about? Hey, uh, Butch, can I get your thoughts on Bruiser Brody while I got you? Yeah, yeah. Memories of the you great guy. Bruiser Brody. A great talent. Hey. I made a lot of money with him down there in Florida. Rick Flair put bounty on me. He hired them all. Stan Hansen, all of them. You know, <laughs> Mr. Lee. It's so Flair. Uh, it's uh, so Flair-like. Uh, 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 who else was after me? The Funks. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, yes. Yeah, the Booker's the Booker brother. Uh, I, who else was it? This sounds painful. It was. I don't know, man. It was grueling. Oh, yeah. Then he come to town, we go for an hour. Now, these other guys, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna do nothing about fifteen, maybe twenty. So a, a lot of guys come in here and then when they talk about Flair, they see they say, Once you've seen one Ric Flair match, you've seen them all. Do you agree? Uh, so, Ric Flair is one of the greatest storytellers uh, ever in the ring. He is a great talent. And he could teach you to wrestle yourself. He's a hell of a damn Methodical type person. 
And he told, he give me a lot of this style. Cause Harley, Harley's un- schooled him along. You understand me? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Harley Ray schooled him along. Okay. These these guys here taught me the kind of wrestler I want to be. And me and Rick Flair put a lot of eyes in the ring. Understand? Yeah, he had Harley to jump me too. Harley, <laughs> were you, were Harley you, give me <laughs> set to go to them hour matches. That's what I'm saying. Were you like, oh shit, man, I gotta do an I hour of Broadway with Flair? Oh my god, come on, stop they it already. Push, they pushing it right up my <laughs> They were pushing me to the top. If he chops me Eddie one Graham more time. Me. <laughs> Eddie Graham liked me, okay. yeah. He used to slap Hell, about them chops. Oi. Oh, I'm oh, way man. on him. And hard, <laughs> okay. Joy Funk wasn't no better. Joy chopped the hell out of you, too. You know, you're talking about Ric Flair. We had Lanny Poffo in yesterday. Uh, you got any thoughts on Randy Savage? Yeah. Randy. <laughs> he hell guy. I went to work for him and his daddy down there one. ICW. Yeah. He, uh, he always said, Randy this, Randy that, Randy. Randy was Randy. And Randy was a talent. And that macho man fit him real good. And, uh, he was very, he was very decent. And very damn respectful to me. Mm. And we worked together. We worked worked against each other. Everything got along good. You know. And, uh, he, he's he's a legend. I'm just curious, by any chance, because you were both at WrestleMania three, obviously, and that was, of course, when Randy and Ricky the Dragon had that. In- yeah. Very famous match. I was curious. Yeah. Were you in the locker room afterwards? Like, was there a buzz in the locker room? Like, did you s- just see? What these two just did? I mean, was there a buzz in the locker room well, afterwards? I've been seeing them do that a few months. Okay. That was working all around the country. So they were prepping for this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And for the, for the, uh, the international and all that, you know. Is, them boys is talent. Is, is there any truth to Randy with the whole Elizabeth thing that he would lock her away and keep her away from the boys? Was he over jealous or was Hell that just kind no. of a made up thing? Hell no. People getting carried away with those stories? Yeah. Maybe he was a little overzealous with her. I just don't understand why she hooked up with Lex. Okay. Speaking of Lex, thoughts on Lex? Huh? Thoughts on Um, Lex Luger? On Mr. Lex Luger. Egotistical maniac. Really now? Okay. Where does that begin with you and him? You know... God bless Lex. Ain't got nothing, ain't got nothing against him. But him and that Sting. Sting too. Interesting. I really didn't care. Gotcha. Well, you can't, you can't like everybody, right? Nope. And, you know. I like to beat the shit out of Sting. Couldn't get to Lex too much. <laughs> Tried. <laughs> Terry Hogan didn't want no more after down there in uh, West Palm Beach. He went and told all that uh, Butch Reed is too difficult. Who, who said that, Hogan? Yeah. So did you you yeah. work programs with Hogan. What was that One like? One time. Yeah. One time. One time. That was a nationwide TV uh, for, for what was it, NBC. This was this is opened up, just started opening up down there in West Palm Beach, Florida. I really wasn't uh, I dropped a leg over there. Man, they get elbows off the top. He's supposed to be beat to death. <laughs> I can't be. I was. I could. I wasn't supposed to beat him. Okay. They didn't tell me I need a wrestling. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. So you went in there pre ready to go. He was that Butch Reed is uncontrollable? What, what, was he bitching to you in the ring like, "Calm down, yeah, what, 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 really? Baby. Stop it, Butch!" What are you doing? What are you doing? And what do you say to him? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I elbow. Oh, nice. And he's saying his prayers and he's taking his vitamins and you keep hitting him. Fair enough. So let's get <laughs> let, let's get back to Sting a little bit. Uh, 
Sting, <laughs> Sting, a lot of problems. Just uh, no, nah, he had a problem. Like I told you about Luger. He go. They just thought they were special. They just some prima donnas to me. Warrior. He was another one. I figured we were on the right block. I might as well, you know, point that. I went to a tour, <laughs> tour him over there in Germany. I wish I wish he turned me with some of his ass. <laughs> I mean, that's what I wanted. I don't, I don't beat all the pain off his ass. You were making Vince sweat bullets. You realize that. <laughs> You realize that. Now, do these guys know that you don't like them? Uh, you kill do them. make it clear to them you don't like them? <laughs> I'm telling you, Anna. Yeah. yeah. So that they're, they're ready to like, uh, who, who am I wrestle at time? Fucking butchery. <laughs> God <laughs> damn <screwed>. it. <laughs> how, how much did Ron Simmons rub off on your career, you know, working with Ron? Uh, yeah, Ron. Ron. Ron, he, he likes the spotlight, too. That's my partner, that's my brother, right now, still today. <laughs> he got on my nerves when he wanted to, wanted to turn back baby with me. <laughs> what do you want to break up for? We got this going on, boy. You know, that's what pissed me off about him. So he asked for the team to be to be broken broken uh, up. No, it was it was it was. They think it's gonna be a hot item like a junkyard dog and Bush Reed. Mm. You know, so the, the the plan come to him and he run with it like a catfish on a loose hook. Plus, Ron's got a little egotism too. Okay. So we all got an ego. That's what I mean. You all have to have an ego, right? Uh, you better. You all have an ego. Oh yeah, we all. Have what I'm just saying. Yeah. We all got ego, but we got to understand about business. It ain't all about just you making money. It's about everybody helping you to make money. So speak- We're better off as a team. So speaking of that, um, is that why pro wrestlers seem to can't cannot get their act together and become a union, 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 unionized group is because you just all have these big egos and you're all worried about yourselves? Or why doesn't that happen? I believe you got a point. But it should happen. You know, it's just it's these promoters that done had control since day one. They way at the highway. They they pit go out the boys against the boys sometimes. And, they, they, and then they they will work a weaker bro a weaker brother against a strong one. You know, just putting him up there. Can't work a lick. Well, well I say about Sting then. Mm. He throw him on up there. There's a lot of that going on. You know, he ain't had no better just right up at the top. You know. Did you ever feel... No, we neither. He just... Looked apart. Seeing the Stings and the Lugers getting the world title, and I know you said it's not that important to you with titles, but at any point, did you just say to yourself, you know, why don't I get the world title? Did you ever want that world title? Do you feel you deserved it? I took it. It wasn't important to me. All was important to me was that uh, my athleticism and and just being able to be the type of damn athlete I want to be in that ring. And that paycheck, and when, right? Yeah, that paycheck. When I when I get done and when I come out of that ring, they done seen something. You know? They done seen a match. They done seen they done seen like Ernie Ladd used to explain to me about the uh about the uh orchestra. You're like the maestro. You take them people up boom, and you drop the sound level down, and they're up and down, and you bring them back up, they're right with you. That's when you're working. That's when people is with you. That's when they wear that big face in, and that heel. You're working. You, you, you got them in You got them in your hand. You got them. You, you working that crowd, buddy. You know, these people, 
Big Fish come up, start striking back. Hey, everybody getting with the program now. And that heel just snatch that hair, or rake their mouth, or hit that, that sack. <laughs> Heel, hey, heel, boom. or heel, or right from them again. Heel or face? You have, yeah, pref, have a preference I there. I got no problem with either one of them. Oh, you were good with either one. <laughs> sure, looked like you really enjoyed being a heel. <laughs> uh, you know, just oh, I was I just curious. Yeah, I figured you might like that a little bit more yeah, than being a, a face. Yeah, okay. It's kind of, it's kind of like my character. <laughs> you know what I mean? As, as a wrestler, I want to be. You know, I, I always think about the families uh, when you guys are on the road and you guys have a tough career. It's Travel's uh, tough. It's can you Can you share with me some, you know, about your wife and how that relationship with, was that you were traveling and how she was able to handle it? Yeah, she was. She, 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 she was happy with the, with the living, you know, making that, that kept her content, but... Not being at home as much as she, much as she want to, that that wasn't good, you know. Uh, but she knew she had to live with it. Mm. She knew that's all I was gonna do at that time. I wasn't coming back home to take no eight to five. Didn't have to. I make about hundred, hundred plus. What was your biggest payday for one match? Ten grand. Which match? I was in Detroit. Against? Oh, at Michigan. Coco. Against Coco. Were you I'm happy sure. with that payout for that crowd? That time. It's a pretty Not big there. it's a pretty big crowd. Like uh, I got a ten thousand a lot of I'm money. I was working, working in the middle I working middle of the car. Yeah. But still I was just arriving up there. Yeah. I was I'm so happy with it. Okay. Yeah. Five grand, six grand out in St. Louis sometime. With flair, yeah, and then with uh, you know, three, four grand a week, run up down the road, jump with junkyard. Yeah, uh, not too bad. It's not I'm bad. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'll that's, do it. You know, up. that's part of my I'm point too. Way. You know, but if you're you know, doing an hour Broadway with Flair, seven yeah. seven nights a week, that's that's a lot of that's rough. You're doing 15, 10 minutes a night. You know, four grand's not too bad, right? Too bad. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. I could I can't argue with that. I mean, you know, we have discussions about Kamala. Uh, you know, the shape he's in at this yeah. point. Um, you, you know, and uh, you know, the big the big part is that he, you know, he main evented with Hogan for a pretty decent amount what of time. Are you jealous, man? Hey, now he's in a wheelchair. He deserves a little bit more than what he got. I know about his sickness and everything. And Flair, all all these people he worked with, you know, we ought to be getting ought to be getting took care of a little bit better. So you believe that there should be some sort of health care or, or something should have been set up for you guys? Do you, do you think it's fair when people criticize Vince McMahon for this and said he should take care of Kamala? Any thoughts on, is it fair to shoulder it all so on? I ain't saying he ought to take care of him. Right. I'm saying he ought to appreciate his talent he's had yep. all these years mm -hmm. and pay them a little business. Mm. You ever see him doing that, Vince? Not yet. No, obviously. But... Do you think the onus also should have been on the wrestler to realize, hey, I'm not gonna be able to do this forever. I need to start socking away some stuff and you know yeah. set myself up my own pension. Yeah, it just don't happen. It just yeah. doesn't Life happen. Life gets in the way. Money world. gets crazy. Yeah. Thank you. You're having a good yep. time. Yep. And then before you know it, it's over, right? Yep. I mean, what's what? Oh, you're, you're over budget, overspending. Uh, you know, you which happens to everybody, right? Yep. That's right. That's yep. right. Yep. So. But anyway. Uh, I'll be some kind of a pension plan. I will say that. Guess we man for two generations in that plan. Going three now. They can handle it. Okay. And keep their money rolling. I agree. Do you get any did you, family? Do you get any residuals from the network at all for any of the shows or any yeah, like uh, yeah, merchandise? I, I've received residuals the other day. One for fifty nine dollars, other for sixty two dollars. 
That's the reason why. That, you know, I don't care about it. I, I, I want this lawsuit to come through. Do you have a case in a lawsuit? Did you get concussions from? Just working out of Boston. Okay. And got they kept you working? Got once. Got thrown out once. Oh, it's coming back. Let me ask Lord you this. Did, 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 did you... Uh, that's did my you, whole but, thing. but did you get concussions in the WCW, yeah, yeah, the Mid South? Yeah. You think not? No, absolutely. <laughs> so, look, I'm not trying to be pro Vince McMahon, but no. if you have this long no, career, yeah, no. you know it's, you know, you got your bell rung in five different areas. <laughs> you know, Bill Watts should be paying you some <laughs> money. Then yeah, too. how do we? How do we? Crockett should how be paying you money. How do we figure this out when there's so many? Vince got the corner. So he's got the market. He's got the market. So he's the man that's got to pay. The man. Hey, at the end of the day, he's got to pony up. He's the man. <laughs> pony up, Vince. <laughs> he's the man. Yeah. He bought him out. He is. If you could do it all over again, would you be a professional wrestler? Well, probably. I tried to be a professional rodeo cowboy and a pro wrestler. Really? <laughs> Hell, that's a hard day go. No, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm a, that's kind of out of your mind. I no, mean, I did. You. I tried. Oh, shit. Really? I tried it. Oy, oy, oy. Well, I grew, I grew up cowboy. <laughs> I was still running, running, throwing people in cows mm. one time in my life. We like bench pressing cows and what? in the farm and shit like that. <laughs> Twist them <a little. laughs> Cut their little balls out. What? Oh my god. <laughs> but I don't want a bull to run around me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I have but one bull in his pastures with me. That bull looks like Who would have thought you were this funny? <laughs> I would have never thought you were this funny. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad y'all enjoy. Absolutely. I, I, let me I'm tell you, you got. Uh, we had a pretty long week this week. Oh, yeah. I will tell you, oh, yeah. um, I personally was a huge fan of yours growing up. Right. And we're not that far apart in age. But um, I will tell you that uh, whether you want you know, you would have, if you could do it all over, you would be a professional wrestler. I'm glad you did because you were a huge Thank part you. of this business. And... Uh, Look, I love the honky tonk man, but I got to be honest. When I first heard the story about that you were the guy to wear the intercontinental belt, which meant a lot to me growing up. Oh yeah, oh, I yeah. Uh, I can't help but always think about what kind of run you would that would have been. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really thought you had the goods as a natural. Um, we both were pro WWE guys, so when you left yeah, and went right. back to WCW, even though I loved Doom, I was a little pissed off at you because I felt like you didn't. Uh, you left our home turf. You, you kind of left, you know. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, <laughs> See ya. Cha ching. <laughs> you know, in uh, New York was all right. It was too big a town for me. I'm just an old country boy. Mm. I don't blame you. I get it, but you did the town. You. you did the town all right when you were here. So I think I didn't do it too much harm, did I? No, no you did great. Not at all. You know, I got to tell you all. what. I, no. you know, WrestleMania four. A lot of people don't talk about it, but your match with Randy Macho Man Savage oh, yeah. in the tournament, I loved it. And I was a huge Macho Man fan, but I was yeah, also a huge. Net. It was a did. good match. Did. Yeah, hell of a match. It was a great match. It was a great heel, match. It was a heel match. It was a heel. Well. He was turning at that point, well, right? They were trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were turning well, him, so. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Did he make you memorize that match move for move for like three I weeks made, leading up to it? I made, I made him work with it. There you go. <laughs> oh, jeez. I was a dominant heel. I'm just trying to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Babyface <laughs> follows that heel lead. He, if he ain't, he's a lost soul. Are you a, Chief, are you a Chiefs <laughs> fan right now? I'm the quarterback. Are you a Chiefs fan right now? Yeah, I'm yeah. a chief man. Yeah. yeah, I'm from Chiefs country. How come you guys keep dropping the ball every time oh, they get in there? Oh man, don't go there. that's rough. But that is, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's every no, year, same crap, man. You get in the game and it's you over every time. You, every time. Right. We're Jet fans, so we know how we you understand. Fit. You and I, Super Bowl three, Super Bowl four. You know? Oh, he's a stud. We got to yeah, he's he's good. Back yeah, he's but good. But you know what though? He's good. I bet he don't keep dropping that ball. Yeah, no, he's yeah, but you know what? You're wearing that Chiefs uniform. It's a uniform, just like the Jets uniform. Stop it with the karma. It doesn't matter how good this quarterback is That's right. when it's Holy on it Len goodbye Dawson, Batman right. but I got I got you know um. <laughs> hey but I'm telling you this kid is going to be Kansas City's savior he's a stud he's yeah. a stud now hold on our kid is pretty promising too 
Sam Do- Sam Donald. He's like, oh, he's like who's that? He don't play for KC. That's, that's what him. I say. <laughs> Sam Donald. Damn it. Oh jeez. Uh, Sam know, rules. All we're, right. We're going to start seeing some good football here in the future, though. Yeah, yeah. Young kids coming up and everything. Oh, you haven't had it. You want more New England? I I can't take it anymore with New England. Can we have someone else win, please? Can we? Please? Yeah. Yeah, let it be the Jets, please. Well, well Jets versus Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, and his quarterback drops well, the ball. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't thinking about Buffalo, huh? <laughs> no, that's true too. I no, I actually am thinking about them with that kid quarterback. So and we got to we got to see. They got some. They got some. I, I I am keeping my eye. We got, on got something going on up yeah, there. I th- I think we got about two minutes left. Uh, so uh, you want right. to squeeze one in there? With yeah, the I want to ask one last question if I can. Right. If you can, can you name me, and this should be kind of hard probably, favorite moment of your entire career? If you could just go back and have one moment and live it again, what would it be? I tell you, boys, down there in, uh, down there in uh, Louisiana, I have my second home now, you know. I can go down there and be anywhere at home. And that's super dope. Me yeah, and that big black man I was talking about. Mm. I won the North American Championship and I pulled out a pair of dick on nuts and I knocked them smooth out in the ring. <laughs> Uh, and, and they won. hated you. Oh, it's the worst open time. Don't 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 be mad at me, man. But I hated Louisiana. I was in there down there for two years. Yeah, he it was. It was two yeah. years of torture. He had a rough time down there. It was maybe the worst. I couldn't even make up some of me, the stuff. It yeah. was really bad. Yeah, yeah well, you just a natural old city boy. <laughs> but no, and they knew it. No, they and knew they it, knew and it, it was it. scary. Yeah, I didn't think. I thought you I was gonna get fed to the Gators. You was a Yankee. Oh yeah. You ain't gonna be needing you, them shoes. That's, that's what's up with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. They know you just playing old Yankee. Yeah, it was you bad. You weren't gonna be nothing there. That's right. Oh <laughs> man, I was scared. I was a scared for a long time. <laughs> I had a similar experience in Texas, but let's not, you know, never mind. Don't talk about me, Jacob. I'm not welcome. Texas. Okay, they Texas took one stuff. look at me and they were like, let's see what's in the trunk. I'm like, no, not that one. <laughs> oh, I, I bought the clan in Texas, Mississippi, and uh, 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 what, what? Texas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. I got three run ins with them. I won. <laughs> I shot at them. Now I may tell y'all no more. <laughs> you, you wow. I mean, I didn't shoot him. Boom, boom. So you, you you want you want to tell the fans where you're going to be for the rest of the weekend? It's WrestleMania weekend. Do you know uh, where you're heading to? I'm heading home. Oh. oh. You're not going to uh, Mark out at the Meadowlands? No, no, no. No? You're not going to do a, a run-in on Vince McMahon at WrestleMania? No, no, no. Okay. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Might want to smack him over the head with the lawsuit. Bang. No? <laughs> Why not? It's a coming. It's a coming. All right, like well, brass knuckles. You know, I want to. I want to thank you for coming out here and taking yes. your time with us. It's been our honor. Yes. Um, I, I'm lost for words. Thank you very much. No problem. Anytime. Thank you. Call me back again sometime. I might have some some, some new news for you. Yeah, and yeah. we could trade football cards, Chiefs and Jets. Yeah, All right, so <laughs> this has been another episode of Monty and Afari. You can catch us every Thursday from 8.05 to 9 thank p.m. You, on Village Connection. And uh, we want again thank the natural Butch Reed, uh, incredible man, incredible professional wrestler. And uh, Farrow, send us out. You've been watching an extremely tired Monty and the Farrow. We will see you on Thursday, 8.05. Until then, later. This is Larry Zabisco Wrestling's Living Legend, and you're watching Monty and the Pharaoh.